Today we are back at Efteling, the most famous theme park of the Netherlands. It started in 1952 with a fairy tale forest, but that's not why we're here today. We're here for the steam train, which joined the park in 1969. Welcome to Theme Park Science. Welcome to the Fairy Tale Forest train station, where the characters are waiting for the departure of the Efteling steam train. And so are we. Another fine character is joining us today. Ah, That's yeah. you, Danny. <laughs> Hi, David. <laughs> you are the host of the Dutch language version of the show. Indeed. And you are going to be riding the train for us today. Yeah, I have my working clothes on, so. Before we can start up the steam train, we need to inspect the track. That is done with the help of this diesel engine. An inspection of the track is done daily by Rob with this unique diesel engine. Actually, they do need to hurry up a little because the first guests will arrive at the park at 10 o'clock. So, Denny and Rob, get a move on. first stop on the inspection round is the station. Danny and Rob will be switching on the lights and checking the cleanliness of the premises to make sure the station is ready to receive the guests. The Efteling uses the diesel engine to make sure that the steam engine can safely roll over the track. So it is important for Denny and Rob to make sure that the railroad crossings are free from any obstacles. Part of the crossing check is to make sure the warning signals work correctly. These loops activate and deactivate the signals. This happens when a piece of metal causes induction by passing above it. Next up are the track switches. It is important to make sure that the joints properly connect to the rail. If the joint would deviate, the steam engine would drive right into the point of the joint. And that of course is not so safe. In case the joint doesn't connect to the track, it is usually caused by some debris that needs to be cleaned out. Back in the depot, it's time to prep the steam engine. But we start with the cleaning job. For today's service, we will be using Morche. This engine was built in Berlin in 1907. The park has three steam engines, and this is the oldest one they have. Before the engine can be stoked, Denny and Rob need to make sure that the water level is sufficient. This is crucial because you just do not want the engine to boil dry, as that will cause ruptures in the firebox. There is a fill safe in the train to prevent it from boiling dry. This is called a lead plug, which will melt and distinguish the fire with the remaining water. The next stage of the inspection is a visual check of the gearing. Rob and Danny are about to check the boiler tubes. A hood is placed over the smokestack to better extract fumes. 
It is very important that these boiler tubes are cleaned daily. This is because the boiler tubes transfer the heat. Any dirt or soot will decrease efficiency. Oh, I think Rob has found a fun chore for Denny. Of course, we're here to learn everything about steam engines, and Teo is ready for us. Teo, we're standing next to this beautiful 92-year-old steam engine, and the Efteling has three of these, but how does it work? Okay, well, I can show you. Uh, sure. Let's first walk to this uh, model. This explains the principle of a, a steam engine. It consists of two parts. This part is a kind of factory in which we create high pressure steam from coal. Coal goes in, burnt, you make hot water, you make steam, and then you pressurize, the steam is under pressure of 180 degrees, 10 bars. Then there is a part number two, which is, which is a, a little machine that is driven by the steam. So the steam enters this part where there is a piston that goes up and down, and the movement of that piston will make this system move. And I've heard we can demonstrate it. Demonstrate it. Awesome. Let's go see it at the train. This morning, we saw Denny create a fire and load coals into the train. Um, what happens with the heat? Okay, I, I can explain uh, uh, here in this, in this real train. Here you see pipes. And the uh, hot gases, the flue gases from the burnt coal are, is led through these pipes. So the inner tube wall of the pipes will be bloody hot. And then that heat heats up water, which is in that vessel. And that water is evaporated. And then we have steam and we continue as long as we have 180 degrees steam at the pressure of 10 bar. And that steam is collected into that vessel, that copper vessel on top of that train. When we have this process going on long enough, we have 180 degrees 10 bar steam in this vessel. And if we have that moment, you reach that moment, we can let the, the train ride. Can you talk to me about the driving mechanism of this train? Sure, I can. Um, the first thing is that we have a, a piston. The piston which is at the bottom of this, uh, this uh, little tank that piston goes back and forth. That movement of that piston is transferred to this crankshaft. And this crankshaft is connected to this wheel and by the other shafts in this system also to this wheel. So both wheels are powered by the piston that moves back and forth. And we have this exact same thing on the other side of the train. On the other side, we have the same thing. So also two wheels powered by, uh, by a piston. So you can speak of four wheel drive. We've seen that the steam sets the piston in motion, but how do you regulate the speed? That's very simple. You, 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 in, you want to know where is the, 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 the gas pedal. Basically, yes. Right? In fact, that's this one in this train. This, in this way, the, the, the amount of steam going into the cylinder is minimal. And by moving this handle, you increase the amount of steam going into the cylinder, moving the pistons faster or slower. The train has been polished and looks nice and shiny. It is currently running to dry. That means to remove condensation from the cylinders and to avoid black droplets in the smoke. The condensation is 
pushed out of the cylinders with high speed. After these steps are completed, we are finally ready to welcome the guests aboard the train. To remove the last bit of condensation, the cylinder taps will be opened one final time before the train catches speed. I just remembered something. Steam trains have whistles, and knowing Denny, he is very eager to blow the whistle. Once we're at the railroad crossing, live your dreams my friend. Live your dreams. You will hear the first whistle well ahead of the railroad crossing. A second whistle can be heard right before the train passes through the crossing, just as an extra warning for the oncoming train. The use of steam for transforming heat into another form of energy, such as motion, has changed the world significantly in the last 300 years. In history, the start of the Industrial Revolution is marked by the invention of the steam engine. It was only at the end of the 17th century that the first steam engine was invented. Thomas Savery and Thomas Newcomen designed a pump that was powered by fire from fire to steam to motion. This pump was used in the mining industry to pump water from the mine shafts. In this way, it was also possible to mine far away from the big rivers, as to that moment only water pumps were used. Later in the 18th century, the famous James Watt designed a substantially improved version of the steam engine. His machine was implemented widely in the steel and textile industries. These developments were followed by the introduction of the steamship and the steam locomotive. In the so-called Second Industrial Revolution, the Technological Revolution, in which the production of electricity was key, and in the Third Industrial Revolution, the one of informatics and globalization, the production of steam plays an important role in the transfer from energy in a fuel to other forms of energy. As an important example, consider the production of electricity. Almost all power plants in the Netherlands convert the energy stored in fossil fuels to heat, then to steam, then to motion, and finally to electricity. At this moment in time, we're facing a fundamental change in our electricity production by decreasing the use of fossil fuels. As soon as the use of fossil fuels are further reduced, also the use of steam will decrease. Perhaps we will once look back on this era as the fourth industrial revolution. coming to an end. Did you enjoy today? David, it was a fabulous day. Beautiful. Yes. So was there anything you, you learned today as well? Of course. We, we learn every day by, by watching the technology. It's, it's beautiful. I, I know by theory, but then to see it really working in practice, it's, it's always, you always learn from this. And uh, these amazing steam engines here at the Epley, what do you think of those? Well, the engines are very well kept. Uh, it's, it, uh, they're, they're nice. 
and I think it's important for our heritage as well. It's very important because maybe in, uh, in, 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 in 50 or 100 years, we won't have steam engines anymore. We, we, steam is out. Yeah. But this should be kept. We should remember the, the, that it all started. Theo, thank you very much for being our guest today and for all your input and information. You're welcome. And thank you for watching Theme Park Science. I hope you enjoyed our episode. Please be sure to give us a like, to subscribe, and to follow us on all our social media. Till next time. Bye.